And welcome back to the part 4 of this tutorial series that will teach you the basics of VR development in Unity. In last episode, we learned how to move in VR using teleportation, and in today's video, I will show you how to set up the other most popular locomotion system in VR, Continuous Movement. I'm Valem, and this channel is all about VR development, so if you don't want to miss the next video, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell. But without further ado, Let's jump right in the tutorial. Okay, so we are back where we were at the end of last episode. By the way, if this is the first episode that you're watching, don't worry, you won't need to implement everything from the other's episode. All you have to do is have an XR brick setup like this, which you will find out in the first episode of this tutorial series. Now, as you can see, I took the time to add a bunch of obstacles by moving and scaling some cubes over here that I will use to test the touchpad movement that we will implement. Okay, so let's get to work. First, I will select my VR rig. Now, in this game object, I will create a new component that I will call continuous movement. Now, let's double click on this script to open it. The first thing we need to do is get the touchpad input for the player. I will start by writing at the top using unityengine.xr and using unityengine.xr.interaction.toolkit. This way we will be able to access the element in this namespace. Now I will create a new public variable of type xr node that I will call input source. Now if we save our script and that we go back to Unity, you can see that with the XR node, we can select a particular input source. So in our case, we want to listen to the left hand. Now back to our script, let's create another variable, private this time, and of type vector2, called input axis. Now, as we saw in the part two of this tutorial series, we can listen to an input by accessing the device. And we can access a device using the characteristic of it with input devices, dot get device with characteristics. But another way to access a device is using the XR node, which is maybe a little bit more straightforward than the other way. So let's do input device without S, device equals input devices, this time with an S, dot get device at XR node with our input source. And there you go, now that we have our device, we can listen to the input with device.try get features value and in our case we want to listen to the touchpad for the movement so common usage dot primary to the axis and we can set the output to be our input axis variable perfect okay so now that we have the input let's move our rig to do this i will create a new private variable of type character controller called character so this character controller will manage how we can move the rig when colliding with an object like a stair or a slope for example and you will see how in a minute now for the character controller we can access it at the start of the game with get component of type character controller for the actual movement of the character, we won't do it inside the update function, but inside the fix update function instead. This way, the movement will be computed each time that Unity updates the physics of our game. Now, to move based on the input, we can create a new vector 3 called direction. On the x axis, the direction will be input axis dot x, 0 on the y axis, and input axis dot y on the z axis. Finally, we can move our character using the direction with character.move direction. Important here, as we are moving inside a fixed update, don't forget to multiply by time.fix delta time. Also, if we want to better control the speed of our character, we can create a new public float variable called speed that I will set initially to 1 and multiply our movement by this value. Perfect! Now let's save our script and go back to Unity. Before testing our game, we need to add the character controller component that we are using in our script. So I will click on add component and search for character controller. As you can see, this component uh, has different settings for the slope and the step of the movement that you can use to tweak how our player will interact with the obstacle. But in my case, I will just reduce the radius of our character controller to 0 0.15 and set the center to 0, 1, 0, so that the capsule collider will start at the beginning of the rig. Perfect! 
Okay, so if I press on play, you can see that that I'm able to move using my left joystick. Awesome. And if we go in the inspector and that we increase the speed, you can see that I'm able to move faster. But there is a little issue. Right now, we are always moving in the same direction and not the direction our headset is facing. So let's fix this. Back to our script. To set the direction towards where the player is looking, we need to rotate our direction by the head yaw. So first, to access the player's head, I will create a reference to the XR rig, which is on the same game object, by creating a new private variable of type XR rig called rig. We can access it at the start of the game using a get component of type XR rig. And now using the XR rig, you can see that we can have access to the head game object by calling rig.camera game object. And in our case, we can get the head yaw with quaternion head yaw equals quaternion dot euler zero on the x for the y axis xr rig dot camera game object dot transform dot euler angle dot y and zero on the z axis. And now we can rotate our direction by multiplying the direction vector three by our head yaw rotation. Perfect. Now let's go back to Unity to test our game. And there you have it, you can see that already we can move and the movement will always be facing the direction we are looking at, awesome. But for now we have only moved our character horizontally and not vertically using gravity. So as you can see if we go above this slope and that we try to jump, you can see that we are not falling, so let's go fix this. Back to our script to set up gravity, I will need two more variables. A public float variable called gravity, which I will set initially to minus 9.81. As a lot of you already know, this is the approximation of the gravity around the Earth. Now for our second variable, this one will be private and it will be of type float called falling speed. So to make our player fall, we could simply go in the fix update function, take our character and move it towards the ground in the same way as we did for the horizontal movement using character.move, vector3.up, multiply by fall velocity, multiply by time.fix delta time, and maybe set the fall velocity to minus 10 beforehand. But this won't be really physically accurate, and you will see why in a minute. Now, if we save and go back to Unity, we can see that if we try to fall, indeed, it's working, we're going down, but it feels a bit weird. The reason is that the velocity of an object going down is not constant like this, but needs to be built up over time. So let me show you how to do it in our case. Now, instead of setting the fall velocity to a constant value like minus 10, we need to accelerate it using our gravity parameter. So by doing fall velocity, plus equals gravity multiply by time dot fix delta time. But this acceleration needs to occur only when we are falling and not when on the ground. So let me create a new function called check if grounded, which will return a boolean value. As the name suggests, this function will be responsible to tell us if we are on the ground or not. And in the fix update function, we can have a new bool variable is grounded set with check if grounded, and then if we are on the ground, we can reset the fall velocity to zero, otherwise we can increment it. Perfect. Now here we go, what's left for us to do is to complete the check if grounded function. Okay, let's get to work. Now there are multiple ways to check if we are on the ground. We could use a collider and check if the ground is colliding with it. But for me the best method is to use a sphere cast, which is basically the same thing as a ray cast, but with a certain thickness. And here we want a certain thickness because if we shoot only one ray at the center of the capsule and that we are on the edge of a platform, the ray can tell us that we are falling even if we are not. So to do it, let's first set the start of our ray. In my case, I will set it at the center of the character controller by doing vector3 ray start equals transform.transform .transform point character.center. Here, the transform point gives us the character center in world space. Now, for the length of our sphere cast, as we are shooting from the center of the character, we need it to be at least character.center.y, but to be more safe, 
I will add a little value, let's say 0.01, so that the ray will be just a bit longer than the character capsule. And there we go, now we can cast our sphere cast, which will return true if we eat something, or false if we are not eating something. I'm going to store this in a boolean called as hit, and we can do sphere cast ray start, character dot radius. So here for the thickness of the sphere cast, we want it to be the same as our character radius. Vector 3 dot down, so this is for the direction of the ray. Out ray cast it it info and finally our ray length. Now as you can see we can add a last parameter which is a layer mask that we can use to tell what we want to set as a ground and what not. But I think this is important if we want to do things right so I will write ground layer and create a variable with this name on the top of my script, set it to public and make it of type layer mask. And there we go, now what's left for us to do in the check if grounded script is to return the has hit variable. And now our script is ready, we are able to tell if we are falling or not. Now let's save and go back to Unity. Okay, back to Unity, as you can see by default, the layer mask is set to nothing. We can change it to everything so that we will check the ground with every game object in our scene. But if you want to be more precise, what I suggest to do is to create a new layer called ground, set all the objects we want our player to collide with to this layer. So in my case, it will be the big plane or the platform over there. And now we can set the layer mask in our script to only the ground layer. Perfect. Now let's click on play to test our game. And there you go, we have now a working continuous movement that works great with a nice and realistic fall. But we are not down yet, because we have still a little issue with our character controller. As you can see, the character moves when we move with the touchpad. But when we physically move around in VR without the touchpad, the character doesn't follow us. This can make us not collide with objects that are in front of us, so let me show you how we can fix this. So back to our script, I will create a new function called capsule follow headset. Now to make the capsule follow exactly the headset, we can first set the height of the capsule to be the height of the headset in the rig, which we can do with character.height equals rig.camera in rig space height. Now by doing so, we will make the height stop exactly at the place of our eyes. So maybe it will be better if we increase this height value with a custom value that we can create as a public float variable with the name additional height set to something small like 20 centimeters. And we can use this value to create uh, to increase the character height. Now for the center of the capsule, I will do vector three capsule center equals transform dot inverse transform point rig dot camera game object dot transform dot position now what this inverse transform point does is give the local position the camera will have if it was a child of this game object so actually this will place the center of the capsule exactly on the head which is what we want horizontally but not vertically so finally we can set the capsule center to be a new vector 3 with capsule center dot x on the x axis, capsule center dot z on the z value, but on the y value we want it to be at half of the character height. So here you go, like this. Now to reduce the risk of a bug while moving, the character controller uses skin width parameter set to something really small, which we can see in the character controller component right there. It's like an anti-error zone, so if we want to take it into account, we can increase the center to character.skinwilds. And here you go, our capsule follow headset function is now ready. What's left for us to do is code it in the fix update function before updating the movement of our character. Perfect! Now let's save and test what we made. And there you go, you can see that the capsule is correctly updating its position when I move around the rig and, and when I go up and down. This is actually really interesting because now as you can see, I cannot go through any mesh geometry by moving forward. And even better, if I want to go under this bridge, 
I need to crouch in real life to get to the other side. Pretty cool. Now here you go, we got ourselves a nice touchpad movement locomotion system for VR. Now an important remark here, if some of you feels like this movement is a bit jittery, it's because the physics time step is too long. So to fix this we can go to edit, project settings, time and here you can see the fixed time steps used by Unity to compute the physics in our game. So in my case I'm using an Oculus which has 90 images per second so I will at least need to time step to be 1 divided by 90, so approximately 0.011111. Perfect, this way our movement will be really smooth. Now last but not least, we can move, so what's left for us to do is to implement a way to rotate using the other joystick. And fortunately, I got a really good news for you, it's already implemented inside the XR toolkit. So let me show you. Now in the XR rig, we simply need to add to our rig the snap turn provider component. As you can see, this component has a bunch of parameters. The first one that we will be interested in is the turn input source. So in my case, let's set it to primary touchpad. Next, we can set the controller that we want to trigger the rotation. But in my case, I will just add one. There we can select one of the controllers that we used for the direct interaction or the ray that we made in the previous episode. But in my case, I will just set it to the right hand controller. Finally, below we can change the rotation amount. Personally, I like 45 degrees, but you can set 90 degrees, maybe. But what I'm actually going to do is reduce the activation timeout to 0.2. This way we will be able to rotate more quickly and not wait 0.5 seconds each time. And there you go, everything is now ready. Now let's click on play. And now we have a touchpad movement that works with snap turn, awesome. By the way, I didn't talk about it previously, but this system works on top of our teleportation system. As you can see, I'm still able to teleport while moving, which is pretty good. Anyway, that is all for today. Thank you for staying with me through this tutorial. In next episode, we will learn how we can better interact with an object to grab it and use it. As always, if you think this video deserves it, you can leave a like below. A big shout out to all of my supporters from Patreon, which made this video possible. And welcome to the new one that joined this week and are on the right side of the screen right now. And if like them you want to have access to the source code of all of my videos, plus exclusive content and also support the channel, join us, the link is in the description below. Thank you for watching till the end and see you in the next video.